Hello Windy Game fan, another awesome week of new releases beginning with Hyper Violence, a boomer shooter that's taking things to the extreme, where this trailer is very loud, mixing both ranged and melee weapons, where interestingly, it defaults to having the gun on the left. A long in development title is Linked Mask, a retro action platformer that appears to be evoking the Game Boy, having an awesome look, where you're wearing different masks, which grants you different abilities. This video is brought to you by Chenzu Club, a pixel art roguelite platform fighter that did actually release last week on the 1st of September, coming to us from developer Pixar Dome and publisher Curve Games. As this trailer shows, there are 5 playable characters which are quite varied, and also has co-op support as our heroines battle their way through procedurally generated levels. The action and combat is the highlight here, sharing some commonalities with games like Rivals of Aether, where there is quite a bit of air control as well. There are power-ups and unlocks, which might just give you that edge over the next boss, so it's quite a compelling gameplay loop, all wrapped up with some gorgeous pixel art and animation as well. This is available right now on PC, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch, so do pick this up if interested. If you love cozy, chill puzzle games, Railbound will be right up your alley, set in the world of anthropomorphic dogs. We are trying to connect these train cars to the locomotive without causing them to crash. Developer Afterburn also has an excellent track record in making puzzle games looking like a chill experience that I could really use right now. Embark on a fantasy journey to an ever-changing castle. I've said in the past that I'm expecting to see more 3D action roguelites since the tech is there, with Tower Princess being one such example, where you choose a knight, go on a date with the princess and hunt down a dragon. But dangerous traps. No adventure will be the same as another, with randomly generated dungeons. Find and free all the princess who's kidnapped by the evil dragon and challenge him in the end. There are different knights with different weapons and even different princesses to choose from, where each princess has their own magical powers which means plenty of variety. But beware, you will die eventually. This is inspired by both classic 3D platformers and the Dark Souls series, so expect plenty of challenge, but this might just be a hidden gem of the week. Are you ready to rescue a princess? You've been working on a game for as long as you can remember. Trapped in a never-ending loop, while the world moves on without you. I caught onto the demo of One Dreamer quite a while back, where this adventure game is releasing this week, telling a story of a burnt out indie game developer who wants to fulfill a lifelong dream. You're editing the code in this game, where I'm not sure how much technical knowledge you will need, and as with most indie games, there might be some autobiographical elements to the game. Come 
Welcome to the Circus Electrique. The most spectacular show the world has ever seen. I'm not being dismissive, but developer Zen Studio can be seen as a B-game studio, but I do always find something to love with their games, where Bigger Games of the Week begins with Circus Electric, where you're put in charge of a circus in steampunk Victorian London. This makes us turn-based RPG combat, where you can have a party of fire breathers and clowns, as well as a management aspect for the circus itself, looking a little like Darkest Dungeon, which I'm all about. They don't know what they're up against, do they? Whether heroes in the streets or heroes in the ring, there's just no beating the Circus Electric. Similarly, another so-called B-game studio is French developer Spiders, where their next title, Steel Rising, is of interest, having you playing as an automaton warrior sent to battle against the forces of King Louis XVI, who has used similar mechanical contraptions to crush the French Revolution, being a Souls-like RPG that looks cool, so here's wishing them all the best. One of the more interesting releases of the week is the Tomorrow Children Phoenix Edition, the relaunch of a game from 2016 which has been described as Minecraft but with a Soviet Union themed post-apocalyptic dystopian setting, where servers were shut down in 2017 but miraculously, 5 years later, like a phoenix, it rises from the ashes, so let's see how this does. Smaller games begin with Astro Knight landing on Nuclear, a free demo of a 1-bit Metroidvania that I'm looking forward to, so why not give this a try? Betrayal at Club Low is perhaps as indie as indie can be, being an adventure RPG with a central mechanic of rolling dice, but it does look a little janky but interesting as well. If you're listening to this, 
you are probably the person sent by the office to continue my investigation. I hate to leave like this, but I'm afraid my time has come. Broken Pieces is a thriller adventure game about a small coastal village outside the flow of time where our protagonist has to figure out what is happening. Chambers of Devious Design is essentially a dungeon keeper mixed with Tetris, where you're building an evil lair for the mastermind and have to deal with other minions building bases for their bosses as well, being able to interfere with their construction. I just mentioned Justice Sucks during PAX West coverage and here we already are with the release, a stealth action title where you play as a killer Roomba, but we don't get many stealth games these days which makes this of interest. Welcome to World Breaking News. Colossal Kaiju have appeared around the world to bring an end to humanity. These Kaiju aren't killers, Lucky. They're just looking for love. A cute looking game is Kaiju, the Kaiju Dating Sim, one where going on various dates at iconic locations with other Kaiju, looking very charming, although I'm not sure how deep the gameplay would be. That kaiju are wooed by wanton destruction? Mm. Love and the leveling of landmarks, so each strike can communicate compatibility. Cats. Cartels and crime. Welcome to Meow Meow Furrington, 
A city that will just as soon claw your eyes out as lick your face. A point-and-click adventure game is Nine Noir Lives, set in a city of anthropomorphic animals where you play as a detective trying to solve a murder. Threatens to spill into the city like an overturned saucer of milk and ignite a war between the powerful Montemu and catulate families. And lick things like an over-eager kitten in a new house lick first a meow questions later. Oh, and definitely solve that murder, too. You know, if this time... Stretch your legs, clean your whiskers, and dive into Nine Noir Lives. Enjoy a classic point-and-click adventure game full of humor, crazy characters, and intriguing locations. Solve challenging puzzles and answer the immortal question, how many things need to be licked to solve a murder in this crummy town? Outnumbered is a vampire survivors like game but in space, being completely free so why not check this out. We also have the 1.0 release of Re-Legend after about 3 years, where this monster taming farming sim had so much promise, but it appears to be rather buggy, so fingers crossed it gets fixed at launch but I'm not holding out hope. Road Warden is a narrative text-based RPG with awesome pixel art, but do expect a lot of reading in this and might be rather niche. Developer Zektronix loves their solitaire games, releasing a collection of them, each with their own unique twist. The other Vampire Survivors like game of the week is Void Scrappers, releasing a prologue demo, making it yet another game in a long line of such titles.
Let's kick off the top 5 with Doko Roko, one which I was pleasantly surprised to see on the release calendar since this game was kickstarted way back in 2015, being a very long 7 year wait for backers. This is an action platformer where you're attempting to ascend the tower, slashing away through hordes of demons in the process. I think that this looks fantastic, which is why it got on my radar in the first place, so fingers crossed it's good, but given the very long development cycle, I really don't know what to expect. Another amazing pixel art entry is Taiji, a puzzle game of all things that certainly looks like The Witness but does have more variety in the types of puzzles. I'm not too familiar with this developer so I cannot comment on their history of games but it looks pretty neat and I'll give them a shot. We also have the early access release of the stealth horror immersive sim Gloomwood, a title published by New Blood Interactive who are known for their boomer shooters, with this title in particular sure looks like Thief. Hello, Doctor. I had hoped for us to meet at my estate. No matter. I can guarantee your safe arrival. A promise few others here can make. The townsfolk are not fond of outsiders. Don't delay. You are trapped in a cursed ancient Victorian city, having to find a way to escape by exploring the city, scavenging for resources and dispatching of guards and enemies, looking so retro and so good. A release that I'm very excited about is Temtem, a monster taming MMO that really made a splash when it released in early access in January 2020 to the extent that servers were hammered and I was unable to get in. Through the months of early access, the developers have added a lot to the game and really fleshed out the world, but the turn-based combat is neat and different from a Pokemon game. With the 1.0 release, it will launch on all modern consoles as well and should see a spike in players, which is exactly what you want for an MMO. The cyberpunk hacker JRPG Jack Move did release an extensive animated trailer so do track that down, but this title has long been on my watch list so I'm very excited We can watch this video for more upcoming JRPGs.